Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is Pramod and this is another Comsha Security Plus exam question series. And this part is also very helpful to pass the Comsha Security Plus exam. So let's go to the questions. And the question is, a security analyst reviews domain activity logs and notices the following. User ID JSMith, password authentication succeeded, MFA failed, invalid code. So which of the following is the best explanation for what the security analyst has discovered? Option A, the user JSMIT's account has been locked out. Option B, a keylogger is installed on JSMIT workstation. Option C, an attacker is attempting to brute force JSMIT account. Option B, the ransomware has been deployed in the domain. And the correct answer for this question is option C, an attacker is attempting to brute force JSMIT account. So let's check the explanation. So the best explanation for the observe activity is C, an attacker is attempting to brute force JSMIT account. Multiple failed MFA attempts with successful password authentication. This pattern indicates an attacker trying different MFA codes repeatedly after successfully guessing or obtaining JSMIT's password. Brute force attacks, this method involves trying many different combinations of passwords or MFA codes until the correct one is found. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C, an attacker is attempting to brute force JSMIT's account. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, a company is concerned about whether events causing damage to the server room and downtime. So which of the following should the company consider? Option A, clustering servers. Option B, geographic dispersion. Option C, load balancers. Option D, offsite backups. And the correct answer for this question is option B, geographic dispersion. So let's check the explanation. So geographic dispersion involves placing servers in different geographically separated locations. So if one site is affected by weather event, the other site can still operate and maintain service continuity so that's why the correct answer for this question is option b geographic dispersion so let's move to the next question the next question is which of the following is a primary security concern for a company setting up a biod program option a end of life option b buffer overflow option c vm escape option d jailbreaking and the correct answer for this question is option d jailbreaking. So let's check the explanation. The primary security concern for a company setting up a BIOD program is jailbreaking. Jailbreaking, this refers to removing manufacturer imposed restrictions on a device, often allowing for the installation of unauthorized apps and modifications to the operating system. This can be significantly compromise the device's security by introducing vulnerabilities and allowing attackers to gain unauthorized access to sensitive information. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option D, jailbreaking. So let's move to the next question. And the next question is, the company decided to reduce the cost of its annual cyber insurance policy by removing the coverage for ransomware attacks. Which of the following analysis elements did the company most likely use in making this decision? Option A, MDTR. Option B, RTO. Option C, ARO. Option D, MTBF. And the correct answer for this question is option C, ARO. So the company most likely used ARO on an annualized rate of occurrence in making this decision. So explanation is the ARO represents how often a specific event like a ransomware attack is expected to occur within a given period, usually a year. By calculating the ARO, the company can estimate the likelihood of experiencing a ransomware attack and determine the associated risk. If the ARO is low, the company might conclude that the risk of ransomware attacks is sufficiently low to justify removing ransomware coverage from their insurance policy. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option C, ARO, annualized rate of occurrence. So let's move to the next question. Next question is after recent vulnerability scan, a security engineer needs to harden the router within the corporate networks. Which of the following is the most appropriate to disable? 
ऑप्शन ए कंसोल एक्सेस ऑप्शन बी राउटिंग प्रोटोकॉल्स ऑप्शन सी वीलैंड एंड ऑप्शन डी वेब बेस्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन डी वेब बेस्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन सो लेट चेक द एक्सप्लेनेशन द वेब बेस्ड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दिस फीचर अलाउज एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स टू मैनेज द राउटर रिमोटली यूजिंग अ वेब ब्राउजर बट इट ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट्स अ सिग्निफिकेंट सिक्योरिटी रिस्क एज अटैकर्स कैन एक्सप्लॉयट दिस इंटरफेंस टू गेन एक्सेस टू द राउटर्स कॉन्फिगरेशन disabling it reduces the attack surface and make the router more secure even if it means slightly less convenient for local management so that's why the correct answer for this question is option d web based administration so let's move to the next question and the next question is which of the following is the most likely to be included as an element of communication in a security awareness program option a reporting phishing attempts or other suspicious activities option b detecting insider threats using anomalous behavior recognition option c verifying information when modifying wire transfer data option d performing social engineering as part of third party penetration testing and the correct answer for this question is option a reporting phishing attempts or either suspicious activities so let's check the explanation A security awareness program aims to educate employees about recognizing and reporting security risks, emphasizing the importance of reporting phishing attempts aligns with this goal as it allows the security team to quickly address potential threats. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, reporting phishing attempts or other suspicious activities. So let's move to the next question. Next question is which of the following is the phase in the incident response process when a security analyst reviews roles and responsibilities option a preparation option b recovery option c lessons learned option d analysis and the correct answer for this question is option a preparation so let's check the explanation so during the preparation phase the incident response team defines and establishes clear roles and responsibilities for each member ensuring everyone knows their part in handling an incident so that's why the correct answer for this question is option a preparation so let's move to the next question next question is a security administrator needs a method to secure data in an environment that includes some form of checks so track any changes so which of the following should the administrator set up to achieve this goal option a spf option b gpo option c nse option d fim and the correct answer for this question is option d fim file integrity monitoring so let's check the explanation so file integrity monitoring this technology actively monitors files and systems for any unauthorized modifications allowing administrators to detect changes to critical data and identify potential security breaches So that's why the correct answer for this question is option D file integrity monitoring. So let's move to the next question. Next question is an administrator is reviewing a single server security logs and discover the following. So audit failures, Microsoft Windows security, event ID and task category is log on. So which of the following best describes the action captured in this log file? So option A brute force attack option b privilege escalation option c failed password audit option d forgotten password by the user and the correct answer for this question is brute force attack so let's check the explanation so brute force attack is a most likely action captured in the logs file because a brute force attacks involves trying many different combinations of usernames and passwords to gain unauthorized access to a system the log entry likely shows a series of failed login attempts with different usernames and passwords which aligns with the definition of a brute force attack so let's move to the next question and the next question is a security engineer is implementing fde for all laptops in an organization so which of the following are the most important for the engineer to consider as part of the planning process so choose two out of these options option a key escrow option b tpm presence option c digital signatures option d data tokenization option e public key management option f certificate authority linking and the correct answer for this option is option a and option b 
key escrow and TPM presence. So let's check the explanation. So the most important consideration for a security engineer implementing FDE are the key escrow and TPM presence when planning for FDE deployment on an organization's laptop. So key escrow, this refers to storing a copy of the encryption key in a secure location allowing authorized parties to access data in the case the original key is lost or forgotten. So which is crucial for recovery scenarios. And TPM presence, a trusted platform model is a hardware chip that securely stores encryption keys and provides a trusted environment for cryptographic operations enhancing the security of FDE implementation. So that's why the correct options for this question is option A, key screw and B, TPM presence. So I hope you are enjoying this video and this part has been completed. So study hard, good luck and thanks for watching. I will upload next part shortly. Thanks for watching. Thank you.